This is a review of the topics that we've covered this week. We've got repeated percentage change. We've got similar shapes with length, area and volume and bounds. Repeated percentage change. The first question says a bank pays 3% compound interest per annum. So every year we get 3% on top of the money we've got. So that means every year we've got 100% our original amount plus 3%. So at the end of each year, we've got 103% of what we had previously. You invest X, so you invest some money and you have £6,260 and 8 pence after five years. Find the value of X, find out how much we invested. So if we have our original amount, which is X, and we multiply it by our multiplier, which is 103% written as a decimal, so 1.03. So that adds on 3%, and we need to do that for five years. So we're gonna put the power of five. So our original amount of money multiplied by 1.03 to the power of five, gives us our final amount of money. So 6,260 pounds and eight P. To get X by itself, we're gonna divide both sides by 1.03 to the power of five. So X is gonna be 6,260 pounds and eight P divided by 1.03 to the power of five. And we'll just type that into the calculator And that's come out as 5,399.999999. So if we round that to two decimal places, because it's money, that's going to be 5,400 pounds. So 5,400 pounds. So if we start with 5,400 and add on 3% every year, for five years, we get to £6,260 and 8p. Question two says in the first year, a car's value decreases by 15%. In both the second year and the third year, it decreases by X percent. So we don't know what the percentage is, but we know it was bought. So initially was worth £12,000. And after three years, it's worth 8400 and 46 pounds and 62p. So let's write our calculation. So we start with 12,000. In the first year, it loses 15%. So what's that multiplier? 100% take away 15% is 85%. So 85% as a decimal is 0.85. Then for the next two years, we don't know the percentage decrease. So we, we're going to call our multiplier, just give it a letter. So our multiplier, I'm going to put as Y, and it's going to be Y squared for two years. I didn't use X because the multiplier and the percentage are going to be different numbers. So that's our calculation, and it's going to equal... Eight thousand four hundred and forty six pounds and sixty two P. So let's get Y squared by itself. So divide both sides by twelve thousand times zero point eight five. So let's type that in the calculator. And that is 0 0.8281. But that's y squared. So 0 0.8281. To get y by itself, we're going to square root that. So square root the answer. And our multiplier is 0 0.91.
So if our multiplier is 0 0.91, what is the percentage decrease? So 0 0.91 times 100 means that's 91%. So each year we've got 91% of what we had the year before. So what's the decrease? 100% take away 91% is 9%. So that means X, our percentage decrease, is 9%. similar shapes so we need to know that a scale factor for area is the scale factor for length squared and a scale factor for volume is the scale factor for length cubed so area is scale factor squared and volume is scale factor cubed this question says we've got two prisms two similar prisms so they're similar shapes prism a has a volume of 60 centimetres cubed. Prism B has a volume of 3,840 centimetres cubed. And we know Prism B has a surface area of 1,504 centimetres squared. And we want to know the surface area of Prism A. So let's work out the scale factor for volume. So if we take 3,840 divide by 60, which is 64, so our scale factor for volume is times 64. So scale factor for volume is scale factor cubed. So if we want to find the scale factor for length, we can cube root. So if I cube root the answer, that's 4. So the scale factor for length is times 4. And scale factor for area is scale factor for length squared. So 4 squared is 16. So to go from our little shape to our big shape, the volume is times 64, the length is times 4, and for area is times 16. And to go back from big shape to little shape, for volume we're going to divide by 64, for a length we'll divide by 4, and for an area we'll divide by 16. And that's what we're doing here. We've got area, so it's going to be our area for our big shape divided by 16. So we've got 1,504 divided by 16. And that's 94. So it's 94 and it's an area, so it's centimetres squared. Question two, if you want to pause the video and give it a go, you can. Otherwise, you can keep watching. So the diagram shows two similar cones this time. Cone A has a surface area of 204 centimetres squared. Cone B's surface area is 459 centimetres squared. And we've got cone A has a volume of 160 centimetres cubed find the volume of cone B. So let's work out the scale factor for area. So 459 divided by 204. And that says 2.25. So we've got a uh, 9 over 4. 9 over 4 is easier. So scale factor for area this time is times 9 over 4. To find the scale factor for length, scale factor for area is scale factor squared. So to find scale factor for length, we're going to square root. So if we square root 9 over 4, that's 
3 over 2. Square root 9 is 3, and square root 4 is 2. And we want volume. So scale factor for volume is scale factor cubed. So 3 over 2 cubed. So 3 cubed is 27. 2 cubed is 8. So our scale factor for volume is going to be 27 over 8. We're going from the little shape to the big shape. So we're going to times by 27 over 8. So it's going to be 160 times 27 over 8. So we square rooted. Then we cubed. We got 27 over 8. 160 times 27 over 8 is 540. And it's a volume. And we're in centimetres, so it's centimetres cubed. And bounds. In bounds, we look at the range of possible answers, depending on the accuracy of the measurements used in the calculation. So in the first question, we've got area is length times width. And the length has been measured to one decimal place. And the width has been measured to two decimal places. So let's find the upper bound and the lower bound for the area. So the biggest possible area and the smallest possible area. So let's look at the length and the width. So length has been measured as 3.5 to one decimal place. The next one up is 3.6. The next one down is 3.4. So the lowest thing the length could be is 3.45. And the biggest thing the length can be is 3.55 meters. For the width, it's been measured at 2.74 to two decimal places. So the next one up is 2.75. The next one down is 2.73. So the smallest possible width is halfway between 2.73 and 2.74 which is 2.735. And the biggest possible width is halfway between 2.74 and 2.75, which is 2.745. So let's look at the area. What could the area be? So the upper bound is the biggest possible area. So I'll put upper. The biggest possible area is going to be the biggest length times the biggest width. So the biggest thing the length can be is 3.55. The biggest thing the width can be is 2.745. And the lowest thing, the smallest possible area, is going to be the smallest possible length times the smallest possible width. So we can type these into the calculator. So 3.55 times 2.745 is 9.74475. And it's area, so meters squared. And the smallest possible area is 3.45 times 2.735, which is 9.43575 meters squared. So because the inputs to the calculation were rounded, that means that the answer to the calculation, the area, has got a range of possible values. So the actual area is somewhere between 9.43575 and 9.74475. So the lowest thing it can be is the lower bound and the biggest thing it can be is the upper bound. Question two is a different question. We've got speed equals distance over time. The distance has been measured to two decimal places and the time measured to one decimal place. 
So let's look at the distance and the time and the values that they could take. So for distance, it's been measured as 15.26 meters to two decimal places. So the one up is 15.27, the one down is 15.25. So the smallest thing the distance can be is 15.255. And the biggest thing the distance can be is 15.265. And for the time, it's been measured as 2.9 seconds to one decimal place. So the smallest thing it can be is 2.85 seconds, and the biggest is 2.95 seconds. So the speed is going to have, again, a range of possible values because the inputs can take a range of possible values. So to find the biggest speed, we're going to take the biggest distance, but we're going to divide it by the smallest possible time. So if you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller answer. And if you divide by a smaller number, you get a bigger answer. So for our lower bound, we're going to take the smallest distance divided by the biggest time. So let's look at the upper bound for speed. That's going to be 15.265 divided by 2.85. And the lower bound will be 15.255 divided by 2.95. So we'll type them in, so 15.265 divided by 2.85 is 5.356 and so on. 5.356 uh, meters per second, and that's two three decimal places. And the lower bound is 5.171 meters per second to three decimal places again. So because the inputs into our calculation, the distance and the time have been rounded, so they have a range of values, that means the output for the calculation, the speed can take a range of values. So it can be between 5.171 and 5.356. So that was our week four review. Repeated percentage change, similar shapes and bounds. There will be an assessment available now. The link will be on the description to this video or at the bottom of the page on the website.